Okay, I did this video yesterday, but in watching it today, I realized I made a mistake in a point I was trying to explain. So, there's some formula to determine as a battery discharges what the voltage drops to on a healthy battery. You use uh, current flow and electrons and stuff like that. I can't remember that formula, but I want to show you another point, which is actually pretty important and more practical. Okay. And it's about internal resistances of a battery. So I'm going to draw my battery here, which consists of a DC power supply, but there's also an internal resistance in any battery. It's usually very low, 0, 0.00 something. So I've got my 12 volts here. This is my 12 volt supply, and this is my internal resistance of the battery. So I'm going to call this R in. I'll assign a value to that later, okay? So this dotted rectangle, this indicates my entire battery. So I'm going to call this a 12 volt battery. So this is my battery. This is my negative terminal. This is my positive terminal. Okay. Now, when a battery is just sitting by itself, it's not connected to anything, and you measure the voltage, what you're really measuring is right here, like this. This is my voltmeter. This circuit represents my voltmeter. And you're going to measure the full 12 volts here. There is probably 2 to 5 megohms of resistance in that meter. They make it like that so that you can really measure an open circuit voltage. This 2 to, two, two to 5 mega ohms is much higher than the internal resistance of the battery. But that doesn't matter. What does matter is you get very little current flow in th through here. So it's, it's like an open. So you get the full volt voltage measured from here to here. Now as you use a battery, that becomes a different story. So I'm going to connect my battery in a circuit. This there's some work being done over here to the right, right here. I'm going to call this RL. That's my load resistance. Now, let's say when you first start out, you get 60 watts of power right here. Okay, that's what you start with. That's what, it, what you're getting when you first hook the battery up. You're getting 60 watts. So what's my current through here if I'm getting 60 watts right here? Okay. So to get that, I'm going to use, to get my current, I'm going to use this formula, P equals IV. That means power equals current times voltage. So what's my power? My power I'm getting is 60 watts. What voltage am I getting? Well, when I first hook the battery up, I measure across here and I'm getting a full 12 volts. So that's my 12. That means my I is the unknown variable. So to get my current, I'm going to take my 60, and I'm going to divide it. I'm going to put it on this side of the equation, and I'm going to divide by 12, okay? Which is my voltage. So my power divided by my voltage, and I'm getting my current. So if I'm pro producing 60 watts there, and I know my voltage is 12, I'm getting 5 amps of current through here, okay? So that means it comes out of the negative terminal. It travels up through this load resistor, and then back into the positive terminal of the battery. So I'm getting a nice 60 watts there, I'm getting 5 amps. Well, what's my resistance here in my load if I'm getting 60 watts there, and I know my my voltage is 12 and I know I've got 5 amps. Well, to get my resistance, total resistance actually, I can use another formula. Okay, so that says V divided by I equals R. Voltage divided by current equals the resistance. So I'm going to take my 12 and I'm going to divide that by 5 amps, eh, kids resistance, 
I'm just going to call that resistance or R. So that says total resistance in this whole circuit, I'm going to call it R tope equals 2.4 ohms. Now I'm going to assume this battery is in great shape. Okay, this is an ideal battery, so I've got a very low internal resistance. It doesn't come into play at all when I first hook it up. So that tells me that I've got 2.4 ohms in my load resistance. Because the battery is acting perfectly, internal resistance is negligible, you don't even, it doesn't even come into play. Okay? But what happens with a battery, especially if it's bad, is that as you use the battery, the internal resistance goes up. Okay, so here's my box. This is resistance on this axis. This is time. Hopefully you can see that. So our internal goes up as time continues and as it uses current in a battery that's uh, it's not in the best shape. So let's say after some time my, my internal resistance on my battery goes up to 5 ohms. I already know this is 2.4 ohms. So what's the current after the battery heats up and my internal resistance goes high? Well to get that I'm going to take, I, I'm going to take 5, which is our internal, plus my known resistance, which is 2.4 ohms, and I'm going to get a total resistance of 7.4 ohms. Now, 12 volts is being supplied by the internal power supply of the battery. It's going through the load resistor, through the, excuse me, through the internal resistance, through the load resistor, and back, okay? So I've now got 7.4 ohms, excuse me. <laughs> 7.4 ohms total resistance. So what's my current drop to? So I'm going to take 12 divided by 7.4 ohms. Because I know it was a 12 volt battery to start with. 12 divided by 7.4. Now because this internal resistance has gone up, I'm only getting 1.6 amps of current. So I get less power here just from that, but it's even more complicated than that. So, how much of the voltage supplied by this source here, internal in the battery, is dropped across the internal resistance of the battery, and how much is dropped across the load? Well, we can figure that out, okay? So to find out what percentage this is of the total, I'm going to take 5, ohms and I'm going to divide that by the total resistance which I just said which is 7.4 ohms and that's going to give me a ratio okay so 5 divided by 7.4 equals 0.675 okay now if I want to know what that in a percentage of course I'm going to multiply that by 100 0.675. Okay. So, 67.5% of my total voltage supplied by the source internal of the battery is dropped across the internal resistance of the battery. So, that means that 8.10 volts is dropped across the internal resistance of the battery before you even see it. So, what's left? 12 minus 8.10. That means if I took a voltmeter and I put it right here, I would only get 3.89 volts. Okay, so now I'm only seeing 3.89 volts to my load, okay? So I said I've got 1.6 amps traveling through the circuit now because I took my total resistance and I divide that into my known voltage, which was 12, which is what I started with, okay? So how much power am I getting to my load now? I started with 60 watts times 1.6. Okay, so I took my voltage that I measured times my current that I calculated, and I get 6 
Okay, sorry about that. My camera just died. So, I calculated that I've got 1.6 amps through there. I said that 8.10 volts of the total 12 volts is dropped internally in the battery. You only see 3.89 volts. Whew. Sorry. I had already calculated that I got 1.6 amps through the circuit. So what's my power in my load? I started with, with 60 watts. But the battery's in bad shape, so our internal jumps up real high to 5 ohms. So what am I getting at my load now? So I multiply my 3.89 volts, which is what I measure with my voltmeter, times my 1.6 amps, and I get 6.22 watts of power across my load resistance. That's the only amount of work that's being done. So now, I get only 6.22 watts. So I get 10 times less power because my battery's not in good shape. And it's only delivering 6.22 watts. Most of the voltage supplied by the internal power source of the battery is dropped inside the battery across the internal resistance, which means you only see 3.89 volts when you measure here. This is a bad battery. So that is why internal resistances become important. Now, only in bad batteries do you see voltage, or excuse me, resistances this high that you can calculate. In, in reality, in a good battery, like I said, or maybe I didn't, you might get 0 0.0001 ohms of resistance or something like that, so that that never really becomes a factor. Anyway, I want to kind of go over health of battery and why it's important to have a healthy battery and resistances and how they go up and how they affect the circuit. Now, in a bad battery, why would you get resistances that go up so high? Well, maybe the plates in the battery start to corrode so that when they try to source current, they heat up and then that corrosion acts like an insulator so you can't get current flow through there, so your resistance goes up. Perhaps you've heard of sulfation, which is what happens when a battery, when you let it discharge and just leave it set, it starts to sulfate on the plates. It builds up a little, this is a plate, it builds up a little insulation layer of corrosion and sulfation so that you can't get current flow this is an insulator, through the plates, through this insulation. So the internal resistance of the battery goes through the roof. So anyway, that's my explanation of internal resistances and how they affect performance of a battery. Hope you find that useful.